it's all about skill set. So if you know your scripts, if you know the questions to ask and the way, sometimes it's the way you ask the questions. Um, for example, you know, you don't have to sell, but if I could bring your offer now at this price, would you be willing to sell? And where would you go next? What's the process from there? Do you have a listing packet? Do you follow up? What's your strategy? Yes. So from there, I have the listing packet. I go out and sometimes you don't even need the listing packet when you get there. They're just ready to sign and tell you to get started. It's that time. Welcome to Roadmap. How to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week we interview a great agent who's consistently taking several listings each month. And we have an exciting guest today. We encourage you to take notes and apply as much of their knowledge as quickly as you can. And then use the copycat principle. Let me introduce my co-host from San Diego, Carly Hathaway. That's carlyhathaway.com. Hi Carly, how's the real estate business? Hi Ran, hi everybody. It is amazing. It's a great time to be a listing agent. Loving it. Super. Well, let's get right to it. I want to introduce our guest today from beautiful, what a beautiful part of the country, Greenville, South Carolina, Tanya Crow. Welcome, Tanya. Hey, Hi. Tanya. Hi, good morning. <laughs> we are so excited to have you on today. We know you're like a major prospector, so we're so excited. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Okay, so we're just gonna dig right in like we do. What is your goal for the year? So my goal for the year is regarding listings taken? No, no uh, closed listings sales. Sold, sold. Okay, so my goal for the year for closed sales is 65. 65, great. Good, good, okay, so your goal is 65 homes sold. How do you reach that goal? What is your main source of income? How do you get those listings? So my main source of income is prospecting. So using the Vulcan system, I um, prospect for sale by owners, which is what I love. Ah. <laughs> so prospecting for sale by owners, um, I prospect at least four to five days per week. Okay, how many hours a day are you on the phone? So usually I'm on the phone about two hours on those days. Mm -hmm. um, and if I don't get anyone or not having a good day on the phones, then I do a little bit of door knocking. Okay, good for you. Let me ask you this. Why do you love FISBOs more than expireds? Um, well, I don't know. When I first got into real estate, um, following the Mike Ferry, I he had a program that was uh, for sale by owners or FISBOs. And so I just kind of learned that in the beginning and just became really good at it. So it's, it seems to me much easier. Um, it's kind of like you're going out and hunting for your food type deal. But in a way, I guess it's easier because a lot less, uh, a lot fewer agents go after the for sale by owners because they have all these stories they tell themselves in their head. That's correct. Yeah. So the competition's not as, as fierce in the for sale by owners as much as the withdrawals or expires. Good. Okay. So is there a little bit more follow-up or what's the, di what do you see the difference? You say it's a little bit easier. I appreciate that. What, what is the lead follow-up? What is, what's the difference? Yeah. So definitely the lead follow-up is the sweet spot or the, the golden ticket, right? So mm -hmm you have, even though you get there and get in front of them, your chances of getting the listing agreement signed sometimes on the first attempt is almost like that golden ticket, right? So, but the key is to keep following up with the clients. Um, they, once you get in there, make the presentation, if for any reason you don't get it, just the follow-up is amazing because they look at you as aggressive and hey, if, if you're doing this much follow-up for my property, then, mm -hmm you know, they look at that and say, hey, what are you going to do once it gets listed? And this market, once it gets on the market, it's sold really quickly. So, you know, you're pretty much like, you look amazing at getting the property under contract very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So when you say that, what is your lead follow-up system? So say you go on a listing appointment on a FISBO, what's your next, and you didn't get the contract signed, what's your next step? 
So my next step is usually I call them back um, the next day, just saying, hey, thank you so much for allowing me to see your property. Um, have you guys made a decision yet? I want to go ahead and get started working with you or for you now. So the lead follow up, and then they may say, hey, no, not right now, but you just can't give up. Um, a lot of agents, if they don't get it on the once they follow up the next day, then they just kind of say, oh, they're not going to do anything. But you'd be surprised. I, I may call back two days later and say, hey, have you made a decision? Um, the home next next door just went on the market. So I'm just also updating them as mm -hmm. well as follow up and just being a little bit aggressive and until I get them to sign. OK, OK, so you're not quitting. So you no. call the very next day, then you call two days later, then you call the next day. And she's bringing value to those calls. Mm -hmm. and she's updating them on what's going on. They're like, she's well informed. She's a, she's aggressive. She wants she she's determined. You know, why wouldn't they give them the business? And I think most agents need to hear this. You know, the stories that that the stories that uh, a lot of agents would tell you, well, I don't like to call for sale owners because they don't want to pay a commission. I don't want to call for sale owners because they eat their young. I don't want to call for, you know, <laughs> on and on. So uh, what say you? Yeah, what's your biggest objection you get from these FISBOs? Yes, yeah, it's like everybody else. You do get the objections for, oh, I can sell it myself. Um, or I don't want to pay a commission because, you know, the listing agent's not going to do anything but put it in the MLS. But that's not true. I mean, you, yeah, you put it in the MLS, but as you're doing this follow-up, you're showing them the value, the power of negotiation skills that you have, the power of aggressiveness, and they feel comfortable with you to list their home and know that they're going to get the maximum amount of money. And that's what you really want. Okay, so, so they're going to net more by using you than they are if they do it themselves. And you explain that to them. Correct. Now, would you, would it be fair to say that you meet some for sale owners that no matter what you say, they're not buying it and you have to move on. Is that, would that be a fair statement? That is a fair statement. And though sometimes you are, as an agent, you get, are a little bit harder on yourself. And my coach Sharon Dover over at Mike Ferry knows that because there's time I've called her and like, Hey, I went on such and uh, three, four appointments and I can't get these people to sign. And she's like, you know, she'll give me some really good advice, but at the end of the day, some will not sign. It, it is what it is, but at least I know that I've tried my hardest and done the best that I can do. Would you also say there's a parallel between for sale owners that have to move and for sale owners that also have to move pretty quickly in your batting average? Are yes. those people like prime versus somebody that's got plenty of time, could take a year or two, you know, you know where they're not in a hurry when we detect that, is that a big waste of time or is, or is there still some value left there? I think there you're, you're uh, spot on that. That's true. So some of the sell, for sale by owners are a little bit more ready to move and they're willing to work a little bit quicker with you versus someone that doesn't have to sell as quick. Um, they do tend to take their time, but if you can show them, Hey, the markets, what's going on, they are a little bit, you know, more uh, willing to work with you and get things done a little bit quick, quicker. Okay. In the case of the people that have lots of time, would it be, uh, is it, if their excitement for the next place is, 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 is strong, that would also would be a motivating a, a factor. So I'm, I guess what I'm saying is when you're talking to, you talked to 14 for sale owners yesterday morning, let's say of those, you know, Two or three of them didn't have to move, but of those two or three that didn't have to move, there's, you know, they're excited about doing something. You know, would that, does that, you know, do you pay, uh, is that taken into account? I guess the whole motivation, timetable, and desire uh, has to weigh into how, where you spend your time. Right. So you're right. Timetable and desire and the end result, where they're going, how soon they have to be there, even though. They say all the time, oh, I don't have to sell. I don't have to move. I've got time. But when you really ask the right questions and dive in, then they would move tomorrow if they had the right uh, right contract with the right dollar amount. So, 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 uh, so, okay, so you're bringing up another point. What they say and what's really going on at the beginning, you have to dig and dig and dig because they don't want to share that they're anxious to get going. Right. That's just another objection to overcome, right? Right. 
and that, and now those walls are generally come down once you get in and and get through the listing presentation and it's all about um like mike ferry and everyone says uh it's all about the right questions to ask and ah okay all right so it so you're you're getting into such a level of rapport and trust i assume that they're then they then they are a little more candid with you right and it's all about skill set so if you know your scripts if you know the questions to ask and the way sometimes it's the way you ask the questions um for example you know you don't have to sell but if i could bring your offer now at this price would you be willing to sell and where would you go next fair enough you, you yeah okay so you're that. taking them through a process where they're thinking about what that would look like right okay i like this mm -hmm. yeah. it's really good so yeah i mean because you're selling five or six homes a month probably some months even more that's a, which is a lot because most people would love to have that for one year you know, so it's a pretty exciting thing. How much is your business for sale by owner? So my business for sale by owner, because I like to go out and hunt every day, I'd say at least 60 to 70% of my business is for sale by owner. Two out of three. Okay. Two out of three. So is, is Hunter your middle name? Is it Tanya Hunter <laughs> Crow? I think so. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. I like uh, that. <laughs> This is exciting. So okay, so when you do get that listing appointment, you're so excited. What's the process from there? Do you have a listing packet? Do you follow up? What's your strategy? Yes, so from there, I have the listing packet. I go out, and sometimes you don't even need the listing packet when you get there. They're just ready to sign and tell you to get started. So, But yes, listing packets generally um, and go in, do the presentation, and talk to them, walk through the property, so that's generally. Okay, and how long does that listing um, appointment take you? So on average, I if I'm in there longer than 20 minutes, I'm too long in my mind. I'm like, okay, something, yeah. something's I, not clicking ooh, here. Oh, I like that. So, I 100% I mean, yeah. agree because people, yeah, they want you to sell their house, but they don't necessarily want you in their house for an hour or two. Like, yeah. get out of here. I feel like so I, I like that. I, yeah. So you're in and out in 20 minutes unless you're signing papers, then it's what, 35? Yes. And yeah, it's usually 35 to uh, maybe 40 max. Mm -hmm. okay. I love it. All right. So I, 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 I like that. So you, you're taking them through a very scripted process. In order to do 20 minutes or 35 to 40 with paper sign, you have to be taking them very, through a very tightly scripted process. Right. And so, and it also... It, it, it has to be in order to do it in that brief of a time, because a lot of agents are going, how can I possibly do that? By the time I ask all these questions, I haven't even started on my presentation, which means that you're asking them a lot of questions before you get there, pre-qualifying it, as they say. Would that be, is that what's going on? So that's what's going on. I'm pre-qualifying pre -qualifying before I get there. I'm prepared before I get there um, with comps and numbers and what <clears throat> I want to list the home for. And I've already on the pre-qualification with them, I've already determined if they have a mortgage, where our numbers are, I did the research. So I my goal is to get out, get in and get out and get the listing signed and move on to the next one. So that, that's so that allows you to go on three appointments a day if you want. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because it's so, and, and the efficiency so there, and because by the time you get through a lot of agents and some of them do two steps, which you, do you do, two, have you ever done a two step or is that, I mean, is, is it all just one step? It's usually one, um, just depends on the client. Some clients are a little bit unique. So it, <laughs> it honestly just depends. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So when you pre-qual, like, I don't know, when I was starting out, I hated pre-qualing because I was so excited that I got the appointment. I didn't want to pre-qual and like get rid of it. So how much of when you pre-qual, do you cancel that appointment after going through? Um, so there is chances that I do cancel the appointment and I've learned that because of my time um, is so valuable. Mm -hmm. So it's better for me to cancel or not take the listing mm -hmm. um, or it, in order for me to maximize my time and get new listings. So so what, one more question in that because it goes both ways. One of the major challenges with for sale by owners mm -hmm. is you set the appointment on Tuesday. 
and you're supposed to go on Thursday and you call a couple hours ahead, say, you know, earlier on Thursday and say, I'm looking forward to our appointment at four o'clock. And they go, well, Tanya, we have somebody coming back for a second time and uh, we're going to, they're bringing their husband or they're bringing their wife, whatever. And, you know, we're, we're, we just need to hold off, which happens a lot with for sale by owner. How do you avoid that from happening? What do you do when you hear it? So sometimes I, you're, you're going to get that. They're going to cancel or they're going to tell you we're going to go another direction. Just depends on the prequal that you've done prior to that. Sometimes I will still show up to the property and if they're still going to be there um, and say, hey, this is what I have to offer. You know, let's rethink the whole situation. Um, so sometimes I do show up. So in other words, they left it as a voicemail and, and, and you'd show up at four, like maybe you didn't get the voicemail and knock on the door and see what they say. Is that yeah. it? Okay. That's so I it, like that style. I, I like that too. But, you know, so he, sometimes I'm just thinking of all the for sale owner situations I did for 16 years, <laughs> but uh, sometimes the only thing in the way of you signing a contract is this situation where they think they have a lead or two what right. do you do with that well if they have a lead or two and i've talked to them have you i basically asked the seller have you saw that their pre-approval letter are you for sure that this is a valid lead and then they'll answer well no i didn't know i needed to do that do you but ever exclude any of those people what'd you say i'm sorry you ever exclude their lead or lead a couple of their leads to go ahead and move forward? Yeah, on some of them I have. And then, you know, I'll also tell them, hey, you know, if I come over to the, pro once I get to the property, I can go ahead and verify that your lead is valid. I'll go ahead and give them a call once you sign the listing agreement while you're there. So that way we can go ahead and get you to the closing table if that is a valid lead. Okay, good. Fantastic. So, so what, what's holding you from uh, going to getting to 100 transactions? Because you're at 65, which is a lot of money. <laughs> and a lot of people would like to do five or six transactions a month average. So, you know, so what, so what are the next steps? How do you get to that 100? So the next steps, um, like I said, I've been talking to my coach, a lot of it is mindset, I think. Um, just preparing yourself mentally for those 100 transactions because that is different. That is a lot of work. All, all what I'm doing now is a lot of work. So, well, being on the listing side is a lot easier. Yeah. It's definitely a are, lot. Do easier. you think you're telling yourself, like, I can't handle 100? Or it's when you say mindset, can you expand on that? Yeah. I mean, as an agent, it's just when you get ready to shift to another uh, level in your business and doing 100 plus transactions. It's just, you want to make sure you're given the right amount of service and that also, since I'm going on these appointments that I'm making sure that I'm taking care of myself and working out and eating right, because, you know, with a lot more uh, appointments comes a lot more uh, requirement of yourself, right? Do you so, have a, a morning routine that does all those things that get your health and eating and, and mindset in place it before you start the day? Yeah, I do. It's, it's almost like being an athlete. You got to keep your body um, the, in shape and mindset and just get, before you get into the game, you know? So yes, I, I do have a morning routine. Will you walk us through your morning routine? Cause we all want to get on your morning routine and do the same thing. <laughs> so usually I'm up about five 30. Um, I do med morning meditation and then I hit the gym and then um, once I'm showered and back, I usually get to the office or started my day um, around 730. Nice. And then, and then that, what is that role play next or what's next? It's role play, um, getting ready, preparing to get on the phone. Usually I do it the night before just looking at my Vulcan, what kind of leads, what follow up, gotcha. and then getting on the phone and ready to go usually by 8 a.m. Fantastic. So are you doing anything with your database? Are you taking care of those folks or, or are you, uh, what do they say, one trick pony for sale by owners? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that because I'm a one trick pony too. <laughs> it's expired. <laughs> 
probably a one trick pony, but I am working on my database. <laughs> you do what with your database? I am working on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. So um, you have a lot of lead follow-up on your hands with FISBOs. How do you keep up with them? How do you coordinate it? Do you set timers? Like, what's your process around that? Because it's easy to forget about people, right? Yeah, for sure. So I set timers. I also have uh, a system that I use that daily. It lets me know which ones to call, which uh, for sale by owners that I need to follow up with. And that's usually, again, prepared either the night before or right at that 8 a.m. But yes, I do have a follow up. Good. That's so important. And do you have a TC, an assistant? I mean, 65 homes a year, like you got to have some help, right? Yeah. So I've got a transaction coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got a showing agent and then a buyer's agent that I send, send the buyers that I don't want to work with. To. I love running on a lean team like that. I love it. I yeah. And, and, and if it's any, uh, from everything I know myself personally, and also from other folks, when you hit a hundred, it's actually easier than when you're at 65, if that helps. Yeah. That's what I've heard, but I don't know how, uh, I mean. It, it, it is a fact, it is a fact, yeah. it is yeah. a fact. Because you have some leverage that you can do and you're a lot more systematic and, and you actually end up with more free time. There mm, was really? a, as you get a hundred and higher, you actually can work a little easier week. I know that sounds strange, but it's all true. So, so, if, like that, it. so if that creates any anticipation because you're on your way and, and, and you're already a rock star, it's pretty exciting. I mean, because most people would love to have your income. That is fantastic. Yes. Do you, let me ask you this. Do you have a vision board? I do. Okay. What's the next car on your vision board? <laughs> I love cars. So I, I know. So my, my next car that I want would, uh, is a Bentley. So, yeah um, what color um i want black with either red or black interior Ooh, nice red, but, red red but i've i've also been on and heard about uh the tesla that you guys Renz talked about a couple times i know i'm getting my third one uh as soon as they'll deliver it and it may not be till november uh i, I mean those are oh, oh the one with the suicide doors yes oh yeah so that nice. one it's so cool do you have one? No, I don't. Not yet. I just got my last vision board car, so I got to put my new one on. And what do you have? I have an X5 twin okay. turbo. I like a fast Ooh. car. Ooh. But I, my next one is a vintage Porsche, but Ren said I have to start dating a mechanic to get that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's some truth in that. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And the vision board really works. It helps, right? It does. It does. Mm -hmm. Good deal. This is so exciting. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, and um, one of the things, the topic of for sale owners, which is a struggle for real estate agents. And if they hear, if they hear this, they're going to all of a sudden, because honestly, folks, I'm going to look in the camera. Nobody, no agents are talking to them. Go list them. Right. <laughs> and the good news is a hundred percent of them are overpriced. So you know, it's okay. They're not going to sell right away because they're all overpriced. Now I know we have markets where there are multiple offers and they last one day and uh, yet there will be plenty that you can get. It's a numbers game, folks. It's yes. Numbers. Yep. It's definitely awesome. a numbers game. Good. This has been a real treat, Tanya, and I'm thrilled that you're here. And, I, and, uh, and uh, can we invite you back again next year and see how you're doing? Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to come back. We have to have you back and you have to send us a selfie in either your Tesla or your Bentley. Okay. All from Fizbo's people, all from Fizbo's. Right. Tanya, how can we send you business? How can people send you the referrals? Sure. So I can give you my uh, personal cell number, which is 404-333-1102. So again, it's 404-333-1102. And I can also give you my email address. So it's okay. T-A-C-R-O-W-E at bellsouth.net. Good deal. I want to thank everybody for being here. This was a lot of fun and we'll be back again next week with another exciting guest. Thanks everybody.
Thanks for having me. Thanks, Thanks Sonia. Ha- it was so much fun. Woo-hoo. <laughs>